All right, guys, video update number three. It's been about two months and a half since we first connected that brand new domain, new.to. Let's talk about some updates, some early results, but most importantly, let's talk about some issues that new to is having that you guys might also be having when you're starting out. So let's start off with that press release, which I honestly didn't have really high hopes for. I did end up using Magic PR, and in terms of pricing, I used their gold tier. Now, this gold tier promised quite a lot. Decent amount in syndication, 150 Google News sites, 650 words, Yahoo News, Finance, Market Watch, Benzinga, so on and so forth. So a decent amount of things to expect. Now we did end up getting posted on some of those bigger domains. Here's the article on Market Watch, and here's the one in Yahoo Finance, which is pretty solid. And here's the complete list of all the domains where that press release was published. Now there's around 87 domains, so not exactly what they promised. And a lot of these are kind of really small news websites. So not super relevant, but again, we didn't really have any crazy value to add to these press releases, really basic press release that we wrote. So it wasn't expecting anything crazy. Now, the other issue is that for the bigger domains for MarketWatch and Yahoo, for example, we see that the actual link that's in the article isn't pointing to new to directly. There seems to be some intermediary type link, which isn't really great for SEO, right? So the authority is basically bouncing from one link to the other, and it's not really a clear path over to new to. The other kind of sad thing is that Ahrefs actually only picked up one backlink from this whole press release. So kind of mediocre results. Not sure if I'd use Magic PR again. Anyway, let's talk about traffic. Let's talk about content and let's talk about some technical issues. So over this past month, my main goal has been to publish as many pages as possible on the domain. And I'd say we've definitely hit that goal quite well. So if we actually check the little sitemap design that I have on Figma, this is the structure that I'd like to have for my website. So we have that homepage. And these little green checks just mean that that page has been built. So we have that homepage, then we have the country level, which so far we're only targeting France. We then have that massive list of cities. I think we have around 400 cities in France. Again, all those pages are built, targeting that main keyword, things to do in whichever city. We then have a breakdown of two types of keywords under the things to do page. So we have the best X in the city. So best restaurants, bars, hotels, attractions, so on. And then we have the things to do in X for X, right? So things to do in in Paris for kids, for couples this weekend, so on and so forth. So a decent amount of pages that have been published for all of those different cities. So a lot of content has been churned out. And if we actually check the website, you guys can do this on your own time, but these pages are starting to get quite busy, right? So we have the top sites, which now looks a little bit more decent, the restaurants, the local experiences, places to stay, the bookable attractions, fine dining restaurants, and then we have all the meetups. And then we actually have all the separate pages. So the top activities, and if we scroll all the way down to the bottom here, we also have internal links to the tourist attractions. We also then have internal links to the best restaurants, so on and so forth. You guys can explore that on your own time. Now, publishing all of that content has led to a small spike in keywords. Again, guys, it is still quite early, but if we actually check some of these keywords, we're basically gonna see that Google is now really starting to understand what new to is and the types of keywords that we're targeting. So little things to do, best restaurants, things to do, things to do, so on and so forth. So pretty solid. Again, Again, very, very early. And I have also started to do a little bit of link building for this keyword, so little things to do. So this URL specifically was doing quite well in the first few days. It started ranking for that keyword pretty early, about one link from Fat Joe, and it does seem to be climbing, which is pretty solid. So I am quite happy actually with Fat Joe with the results. I'm gonna be doing a lot more link building this month, so I'll have a full breakdown of all of that in the next video. Now, let's talk about some common mistakes that can really hold your traffic hostage for the first few months. Those same mistakes that are affecting new to right now. So we're going to head to Google Search Console. And by the way, I can't stress enough how important it is to understand Google Search Console as a tool and to know all the different parts and all the different data that they're providing. And it's the best way we have of knowing what Google thinks of our website. And in the early days, guys, it's super important to be on Google Search Console almost on a daily basis. So let's talk about a few issues that have come up that you guys might also be going through. So as I said before, I've been publishing a lot of pages, but just because I'm launching those pages on my website doesn't really mean that Google is indexing them. Now, ideally, the more pages you publish with high quality content, the more keywords you can target. And as a result, the more potential traffic you can get to your website. But unfortunately, this is not what's happening right now with new to. So if we check my latest sitemap on Google Search Console, we're going to see that we have a little bit more than 3000 pages in that sitemap. And by the way, guys, if you don't have a sitemap that you're updating and sending to Google every time that you're creating or removing a bunch of pages from your website, and I highly recommend that you do that. It's one of the best ways of letting Google know all 
the different pages that you have on your website. So anyway, we do have 3000 plus pages in the sitemap, but if we actually check the pages report, we're gonna say we only have around 1300 indexed. We have more than half that are not indexed. And if we scroll down, we're gonna see all the different issues. I'm not gonna cover each of them individually, but if you guys do see these issues early on, I highly recommend that you click into them, take a look at all the different URLs that this is affecting. And once you fixed it, then click on validate fix. That's gonna send Google a very clear message that you've taken care of those issues. And now Google is gonna take another look at those URLs and possibly re-index them if everything is is all good. Apart from that, guys, I do want to cover one main thing. In the early days, we need to make it as easy as possible for Google to crawl our website. Now, if you want to know how Google is crawling your website, all you have to do is head over to the crawl settings. So we're going to scroll down here, head over to settings, and in the crawl stats, we're going to click open report. Now, here we're basically going to have a breakdown of how Google is crawling your website, all the different issues, and all the different problems. Now, if we take a look at the crawl request report, we're going to see that around here is when I submitted my website to Google. So the request kind of spiked, which makes sense, right? There were a lot of new pages that Google had to crawl. It kind of died down as I didn't publish any pages. And then these subsequent spikes are just me submitting new pages to my sitemap, right? The issue is that around this time frame, I've also published a bunch of new pages, but the crawl rate has kind of died down, right? So this is a pretty significant issue that we have to tackle. Let's talk about why this is happening. So that brings me to the three main things that we need to focus on in the early days to make sure that Google is crawling our website efficiently. The first thing is to make sure that our website is really fast. The faster our website is, the more URLs Google can crawl and the more efficient it's going to be on your website. If we actually take a look at the average response time, we're gonna see that there's a pretty significant spike in terms of response time right around when I submitted a bunch of new pages and this is when the crawl rate kind of died. So this is a pretty good indication of what I need to fix on my website. The second thing is that we need to prevent unintended redirects. So this also slows down the crawlers quite a lot and can hurt your crawl rate. So if we scroll down, and take a look at the buy response, we're gonna see that there's two different redirect errors. Here's a pretty significant spike around the same day that is also most likely the culprit of my crawl rate dying down for new to. And the last thing is we need to prevent server errors. So 500 errors. Unfortunately, this is gonna tell Google that our website is kind of unstable. And as a result, it's gonna turn that very efficient crawl process into a nightmare for Google. And we can see again that there's that pretty big spike. If we actually dive a little bit deeper into the host, so this is the main host, of the new to website. We can see that message that the host had problems in the past and the server connectivity. We're gonna see that all of these are 500 errors of server errors. Now, unless you're building a website from scratch with code, you shouldn't really have to worry about these type of errors. Now, lastly, here's Google themselves talking about crawl rates. If we scroll down to crawl health, if the site responds quickly for a while, the limit goes up, right? Which means that will crawl more of your pages quicker, meaning more connections can be used to crawl. If the site slows down or responds with server errors, the limit goes down in Google Bot crawls less. So the less they crawl, the longer they're going to take to see your pages, to index them, and as a result, to rank them and for you to start getting traffic. We definitely need to take care of these errors. So my plan for this next month is to number one, fix up these crawling issues. I've already made some changes. They're looking quite good. Number two, publish the rest of the pages. And number three, do some serious link building. I'm about to go ham on this link building, guys. I'm going to continue buying links from a couple of the bigger link building agencies. If you have any website that you'd like me to buy links from to kind of review the process, then let me know. I will definitely be reviewing Fat Joe in the next video. Number two, I'm going to start my link bait campaign. And number three, I might even start doing some guest posting. I'm looking forward to telling you guys all about it. I'll see you guys in the next one.